A type 2 error is a missed opportunity to make an interesting conclusion. So in this case, it would be the company concludes there is insufficient evidence to support the claim that their employee's mean systolic blood pressure is greater than the national mean of 122 when it in fact is. For part B, let's start by stamping a normal distribution. And you can get these stamps on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. We can use a normal distribution because they say the sampling distribution is approximately normal. And they tell us the mean is 122. And the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is 1.5. So let's label a few standard deviations out in each direction. Now the hypotheses given in the stem of the problem show this is a one-sided test. That means we're specifically interested in if this company's true mean systolic blood pressure is greater than 122, not if it's just different than 122, specifically if it's greater than. So if the alpha value is 0.05, we're interested in the highest 5% of the sampling distribution. So that's like up here, 5%. Remember the area under this whole curve is one. So where's this upper 5%? We can actually calculate where that cutoff is with our calculator. Press second, then vars, and go to inverse norm. Now the area we're interested in is 0.95. That's because if we're looking at the upper 5%, 95% of the area would be lower than that. For mean, we're gonna put 122, and standard deviation, 1.5. Now this tells us the value of 124.467, which is about here, cuts off the upper 5%. So we'll say any sample mean value of 124.467 or greater would result in a p-value of less than 0.05. Thus, the null would be rejected and the company would conclude that their true mean systolic blood pressure was greater than 122. For part C, let's stamp another normal distribution. We're told the truth about this company is that their true mean is 125 and their standard deviation is 15. We can find the standard deviation of the sampling distribution by dividing that 15 by the square root of the sample size. So let's use that true mean and that sampling standard deviation to label our axis of our normal curve. In part C, we have the sampling distribution for samples of size 100 from this company. And we can use that to figure out the probability that their X bar, their sample mean, will exceed that value we found in part B, the 124.467. So let's start by labeling that value on this curve. One thing that might help is a quick little z-score calculation. So 124.467 is about 0.35 standard deviations below the mean. So that's probably about here. So any x-bar up in this shaded region would result in us rejecting the mean. And remember, the area under this whole curve is 1, so we know our probability is going to be greater than 0.5 since it covers more than half. To find that actual probability, we're going to use normal CDF on the calculator. So if you press second, then vars, and go to normal CDF, it says what's your lower limit? It's going to be that 124.467 we found in part B. Our upper limit, there is no upper limit, so we're just going to put a bunch of nines there. Our mean is 125, and our standard deviation is 1.5. And there we have it. That area of the shaded region is 0.6388 approximately. So we'll say the probability a sample of size 100 leads to rejecting the null hypothesis at this company is 0.6388. That calculation we just did is a power calculation. So the answer to part D is power. Now in part C, we calculated the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. And part of that calculation was dividing the population standard deviation by the square root of the sample size. If this number increases, if the sample size increases, this population standard deviation will be divided by a larger number. 
and that will make the standard deviation of the sampling distribution smaller. This would make the value 124.467 further away from the mean in the normal curve. It would move closer to the left tail. This would result in a greater area of the normal curve representing values above 124.467. That means more X bars, more sample means would lead to rejecting the null hypothesis. So the probability the company would reject the null would be greater than the 0.6388 we found in part C. If you liked my explanation for this problem, you might also like my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's available on Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description. Um, but this problem, number six on the AP exam this year, is pretty similar to problem 74 in the book. So I'll link to the video explanation of this problem as well, so you can learn more about power.